In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our focus is on John chapter 10, the first 10 verses, but with a special particular focus on verse 4, the second part of verse 4b. The sheep hear his voice, and they follow him. When our days are filled with sunshine and health and prosperity and achievement, well, the truth of the matter is is that we probably don't think about Jesus as much as we ought, or we don't think that we need him as our door or as our shepherd. But these are not such days. In fact, the last six weeks of the world's life have changed absolutely everything about how we go about life. And the one thing pastorally that I've been very concerned about is that the events of the last six weeks have threatened to nullify, to extinguish, to erase the meaning of the celebration of Easter. And that's why I think while we're still in this Easter celebration, more than ever now, it's important for us to be reminded of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, but also to be reminded that this is a voice that lives. It's a voice that lives still to this day. It's a voice for our time. It's a voice for times such as this. So, a blessed Good Shepherd Sunday to all of you. We gain a great amount of comfort from this pastoral and patient idea of our Good Shepherd, our Good Shepherd who is listening to us and who is shepherding us and who is leading us and who is protecting us. That's great that we get comfort from that. But this morning, he warns his hearers about thieves. Thieves who have come to kill and to destroy and to steal. And in the context of our gospel lesson this morning, they have one goal, to separate. To separate the sheep from the shepherd. Their mission is singular. It's to steal the sheep away from the protection of the good shepherd. Jesus calls them thieves and robbers. And all of that is much easier for these thieves and robbers to do if they can get the sheep's hearing to be a little bit numbed so that the sheep cannot distinguish between the shepherd's true voice, which is what they will normally only follow, and other voices. This morning, Jesus is referring to these thieves and robbers that he speaks of here as the religious of his day. Um, Prophets of their time, of Jesus' time, that were not like the good old-fashioned prophets from the Old Testament, but rather prophets that taught something totally different from what God says. We could call them religious thieves, religious thieves that drove people to terror and to despair and stole any sort of comfort that they could have possibly obtained from God's word and God's care. We could call them spiritual robbers because they failed to proclaim the words that God had spoken, but then they failed to proclaim the words that God had. They proclaimed their own and not what God had given and trusted to them to proclaim. They were false voices. They preached what God did not say. And then they failed to preach what he did say. They failed to proclaim what we would call today a distinction between, yes, law and gospel, but a distinction between God's commands, but also God's promises. And that's the part where they really dropped the ball. 
For all these reasons and many more, but these are the top three or four reasons, Jesus called them thieves and robbers. Their voices were not living and active like the good shepherd. No, their voices, they were divisive. They caused fractions in the house of God. And they were destructive for the souls of the people that God had entrusted to them to be shepherds, prophets of his people. For Jesus... He had a hard time with this. So I'm going to ask you, in today's setting, where is the true voice? I mean, we're all looking for it. Where, where is the, the leading voice that we can trust and we can follow? Like them or not, given the historical enormity of what this planet is facing, I think you have to give some marks to almost all of our premiers and to our prime minister. Oh, you can find fault with anything and everyone, but this is a once in a lifetime, once in a generational pandemic. Not that the world hasn't had them before, but they don't come along that often. They've done a pretty good job of of leading us through. Um, So far, God willing, they will continue to do so, and we keep them in our prayers for that wonderful guidance as they try to navigate an entire nation, an entire province through something that is hopefully a one-off for our generation. Where is that true voice that we're all looking for? Where is that true voice when there are absolutely millions of voices that get streamed into our homes over a fiber optic cable of which we are probably spending far more exponentially, far more time watching television and hearing those voices than we normally would on any given normal work day. Where is that voice guiding our souls while our bodies are hunkered down in this pandemic? I pray that you're joining us for Wednesday night Bible class with Pastor Thompson. I pray that you would join us for Sunday morning Bible class. It's really easy. All you need to do is go to our website and scroll down and look for online Bible class, and we'll just take you right there. And the handouts, Pastor Thompson's, are posted on the website, and mine come out from Sue on Friday when she sends you the worship folder. We're starting a new psalm on Sunday. Um, Psalm 121, I think, is what we're going to take a look at. At least that's what I have prepared for you. But where is that voice guiding our souls during this pandemic while we're hunkered down at home? Where is the comforting voice when senseless violence racks the province of Nova Scotia and affects the very fiber and being of a nation who mourns with them. Where is the comforting voice for those people? Where is the unconditional forgiving voice for the sheep when their consciences stare back at them like a rap sheet filled with endless sins and guilt and hell and mistakes and regrets? Where is that comforting voice when the days of our life come to an end? Is there such a voice? Is there a true voice? There is. It's the voice of our Good Shepherd, our Good Shepherd who is truth, that truth that actually came back to life and rose from the dead and lives still today, speaking to his world, speaking through his church to this world, speaking particularly through his word to his people for their comfort and for their strengthening. But he said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the voice that comes from the good shepherd and does what a shepherd is supposed to do. A shepherd who leads his sheep through the evil that surrounds them. A shepherd that 
protects the sheep when confronted by thieves and robbers, a shepherd who rescues his sheep when they are in peril, and a shepherd also that forgives his sheep and assures them of the forgiveness of those sheep when sin has entrapped them. You see, brothers and sisters, the purpose of the thief, he lives in order to make sure that the sheep die. But the shepherd, the good shepherd, he dies so that the sheep may live. That's awfully comforting, isn't it? This good shepherd, this good shepherd has a voice that still lives, and and because it lives, that's how we know that we can listen to his voice. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This full life that John is describing here under inspiration of the Holy Spirit is, is a new life, and this new life that he's talking about is eternal life. I am the gate, Jesus said. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in, and they will go out, and they will find pasture. Through the work and the pain of this good shepherd, Jesus, we were made his sheep. And then this good shepherd, through his death on the cross and his resurrection, that guarantees that he will guide and he will protect and he will lead and he will strengthen his lambs and his ewes and his rams through this living voice of his. Brothers and sisters, the shepherd's love for us in the cross and through the resurrection from the dead is our only security when those clamoring false voices uh, just continue to bombard us. For those voices, of the, those false voices of the robbers and the thieves, they are not going to end until Jesus returns or he calls us home. But in his voice, in his word, we have security. And he tells us in this word this morning that we will go in and we will come out and we will find a wonderful pasture. That's real freedom. That's the real freedom of living within or under the the umbrella of security of this shepherd. That's the real freedom of being told that as one of those sheep, we are going to be led into this pasture called the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. In the meantime of daily life, the Lord has seen fit to find a way to constantly remind us and constantly reassure us of this grace that he has given to us in Christ by embedding the word of God, this voice of the one true voice of the good shepherd, embedding this voice of the shepherd into the church's ministry and its fellowship, even though we are separated by an internet line or a fiber optic line and kilometers and kilometers. I found this past week, maybe it was a week and a half ago, rediscovered this section of Luther's works that I absolutely love. And it's the part where he, his statement about God not being a stingy God as far as his grace. It's, it's from a homily that Luther preached um, in March of 1522. Homily meaning it was probably midday and it was just a shorter sermon at kind of different style. Um, and, and he is first and foremost primarily writing here about the comfort and the blessings of confession and absolution in the daily life of a Christian. But just listen to the myriad of, of listings of absolute wonderful grace 
of the true voice of the shepherd that comes to us in all these different ways that God has embedded into the, embedded the voice of this true shepherd into the life of his church, into the life of his people. Listen, Luther wrote, for our God, the God we have is not so stingy that he has left us with only one comfort or strengthening for our consciences or only, or only one absolution but we have many absolutions in the gospel, and we are richly showered with many absolutions. For instance, we have this in the gospel. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Then he goes on. Another comfort we have in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses, we pray, Father, as we forgive those who trespass against us. A third is our baptism. When I reason thus, see, my Lord, I have been baptized in your name so that I may be assured of your grace and mercy. Then we have private confession. When I go and receive a sure absolution as if God himself spoke it so that I may be assured that my sins are full and freely forgiven. And finally, I take to myself the blessed sacrament. When I eat his body and drink his blood as a sign that I am rid of my sins and God has freed me from all my frailties. And in order to make me sure of this, he gives me his body to eat and blood to drink so that I shall not and cannot doubt that I have a gracious God. Thus you see, that confession must not be despised, but that it it is a comforting thing. Each of these many absolutions that Luther lists here have their own unique vessel, their own distinctive time. Each have their own rightful place, and their appropriate vehicle. Yet, their end is all the same. To forgive sinners and to strengthen their conscience. There, in the blessed waters of baptism, combined with his voice. There, in the supper that we all long for, There is real food because his voice is there. His voice is here every time it is read or heard or shared. And all of it is for the purpose of the same end, to assure the forgiven and to unburden the conscience of the sinner and the repentant. And in our current context, some of these various vessels of the shepherd's voice have had to be set aside and others work better than others. But it is all to the same end. The fact is that our shepherd is not, never has been, and never will be stingy with his voice of forgiveness to his people, to his church, for the world. It's true. Our situation for our generation is certainly unprecedented. But the truth of the matter is that our shepherd's forgiveness is not. It's a voice for our time. Here's the voice for times such as this. You and I are the good shepherd's sheep. You and I hear his voice. And we know that his promises to us are true. And so, if such sheep of such a good and caring shepherd could speak, I think that 
this sheep would end his little message by saying, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it will guard and it will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.